We have our guest speaker today is one of our own, um, someone in our congregation, probably a person you know very well. He's been um, with this church for maybe 40-ish years. Um, uh, Dan Heim is our guest speaker today, so please give him a welcome. Good morning. I'm going to start out with this. And then he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me daily. Amen. Good to see the cross here. Well, as I said, good morning, Bay Point Church. Welcome to the house of God. Created by the Son, Jesus Christ. You are his body, the church. So what I'd like for you to do this morning is stand up, please, and we're going to read. We're going to read this scripture together. This is our scripture message for today. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. It was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be seated. So the light shines in the darkness for those who believe. John 8, Jesus says this. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. A lot of people walk in darkness, folks. Uh, mentally, physically, spiritually. Jesus said, I am this light, that if you believe in me, you will not walk in darkness. Let's open with a prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Open our hearts, open our minds to God's will and God's word through the power and love of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, I've been around here for a while, <laughs> 40 some years, right? My babies were baptized here, they were confirmed here, they were married here. It's all good. It's all good, all right? Uh, a little something you may not know either is last Christmas Eve, this church celebrated its 155th anniversary last Christmas Eve. All right, the country of the United States of America is only 247 years old. So that tells me that uh, God, God likes this place. Okay? He created this place a long, long time ago. And he's going to be around. Uh, another thing you might not know that I want to share with you this morning is we are very active in the community. Uh, we have lots of ministries. We have a daycare here on campus. We have a bargain center that's in downtown Venice. 
that raises funds and monies to help out. And we have a cemetery over on Colonial Lane, which I happen to be the sexton of. So we have a lot of things going for us, okay? Um, and with that being said, I'm going to move on to the word that the Lord gave to me. And that is, let go and let God. So if you go to the beach in July, you don't have a cap or sunscreen, you're probably going to get burnt. You go out on a rainy day and you don't have an umbrella or a rain jacket, you're probably going to get wet. For those of us who came from the great north, you go out in a snowstorm without gloves and a hat and boots, you're going to get cold. So with that being said, if you go out into the world without the Lord, you will probably get lost and you will probably be overcome by sin and temptation. Okay, so here's what you do. You get up in the morning and you put on the armor of God every day. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Power. Put on the armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Powerful words. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rules, against the authorities, against powers of the dark world, and again, the spiritual forces of the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stay firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all that, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Which is the word of God. The word of God is the sword, the double-edged sword. And then, with prayer in the Spirit in all occasions with all kinds of prayer and request, this is meant, the mind be alert, always keeping on prayer for the Lord's people. Prayer and the word. Prayer and the word are what that is about. Because through prayer and thanksgiving, not for what we do or have, but what we do have, or not for what we don't have, I'm sorry, for what we do have. Through prayer, you, are, you should be happy and thankful for everything that you have, everything that we have, everything that we have, okay? Be thankful to God daily, just like the disciples were. They trusted they believed, they obeyed until he wasn't there anymore. They followed him and they said, man, you're great. But when he was gone, their belief kind of faded away. Believe he has a plan and a purpose for everyone who calls on his name. 
and believes that he is the Son of God, just like he did for his disciples. When he, he need to, <clears throat> we need, excuse me, we need to let go and let God. Let God lead us, not in our will, but in your will, Lord. Uh, Luke 22, 42. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but your will. And an angel came from heaven, appeared to him, and strengthened him. It's not our will. It's God's will that be done. Amen? Yeah. We need to do that. Uh, just as he said in John 20, 29 to Thomas, because you have seen me risen and touched my hands and put your finger in my side, you believe. But blessed are those who believe in me but have not seen me. Because in the day of resurrection, we will see the Lord. If you trust in the Lord and have faith in the Lord, you will remain in the Lord. The word blessed, when he was saying that, he, he says, blessed are those who have not seen me yet they believe me. The word blessed means to be made holy or consecrated. So the Lord is saying, holy are you who believe in me, but yet you don't see me, but you know me, and you know me through the Spirit. He has always been, and he will always be, just like our scripture in the opening. He was in the beginning, he will be in the end. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. You can't. Nobody can deny that the Lord is part of this, the Trinity. The same value, my question is, what is your value in God's eye? Okay? So, everything has a value. We're all valued in ways by people, Certain people, different people. Um, I want to bring this to your attention this morning. I'm reading off the sheet because I got a phone call uh, Friday afternoon <laughs> about 1 o'clock. Hey, can you like do a message Sunday? I said, sure, give me 24 hours. I can put a message together in a slideshow. Or, yeah, no problem. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of using the, I'm kind of using my cheat sheet here, folks, instead of walking back and forth. But anyway, that's all fine. That's all good. You do the best you can. All I did was sit down for about a half an hour and say, Lord, I just, I'm going to grab a piece of paper and a pencil, and I just want you to talk to me. So four hours later, I had written seven sheets of words that I had to go back through and back through and back through to try to put together. Anyway, I got in my pocket here this old beat up, wrinkled $1 bill. And it, it, it's, it's in bad shape. So what I need from you this morning and I mean this. I need you to reach in your pockets. I need you to reach in your purses. I need you to bring me some change. I need some change. Somebody can bring me some change. Anybody got any change? I need some change. I don't accept credit cards. All right. That's okay. I brought my own change. Oh, oh no, Ron, 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 bring me some change. I need some change up here. Yeah, I need some change. Change, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, 
Yeah. Thank you. Look at that. I'm going to put that in the offering plate after the service. You can't have it back. <laughs> so anyway, the reason I ask that is I get this old bad dollar here. It's, it's used. It's in bad shape. I need some change. We need some change. Okay? One thing in common between this dollar bill and all that change on the floor is it all says one thing on the back. In God we trust. It's American. It's the United States of America. It's who we are. We're a country created by God. Okay? That's what we believe. This is our currency. Well, here's the question I have. There's a penny. You trust God with one one hundredth of your soul? There's a penny. There's a nickel. Do you trust God with one twentieth of your soul? Trust in God. We trust. Here's a dime. Do you trust God with a tenth of your soul? Here's a quarter. Do you trust God with a quarter of your soul? 25% of your being? Do you give 25% of everything you are, have, physically, spiritually, I'm speaking, to God? I can see nobody dropped off a half dollar here. Which, I, I, that's okay. Could you give 50% of your soul back to God? Do you trust him that much? I broke this out this morning. This is a 100-year-old silver dollar. Silver. Made of silver. Can you trust 100% of your soul? to the Lord because I'll tell you what this says one dollar it's worth a dollar it's a tender this says one dollar it's worth a dollar in tender but it's worth a whole lot more than a dollar okay what I need this morning it's for you to listen to this word. Everything has value in God's eye. He has given us all gifts. First, he gave the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then he gave the gifts of the Spirit to each and every one of you. Do you know what your gifts are? If you don't, you need to find out because every one of you has been given a gift from God through the Holy Spirit. Every one of you, they're there. If you're here and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to take up his cross, you have a gift. You got to find out what it is. When and how you have these gifts is worth a penny. Is it worth a nickel? Is it worth a quarter? Is it worth a dollar? Is it worth a silver dollar? Your gifts are worth everything because we're the body of Christ. We're the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody together, folks. We're not all fingers. We're not all arms. We're not all feet. We're everything. Not in money standard, in spiritual standard. You need to give back one hundredth of what God gives to you, no matter how you do it. It could be 
volunteering, it could be part of a community, it could be showing up on Wednesday, it could be showing up for the Bible studies that we're going to start back up. Whatever it is, folks, we all have gifts. We all need to use them, okay? Because gifts are a blessing. A blessing from the Lord, a blessing from the Father. We need to show our gratitude through our love, through our patience, through our kindness, and through our forgiveness. Okay? Just like the Lord Jesus did. He did it as our example. After all, brothers and sisters, God is in charge. God is in charge, not man. The Lord is in charge. So, that's why he said, I must return to the Father's house. He ascended. He stayed with the disciples after the resurrection. He was there with so many people. So many people saw him. But then he said, I have to go. Okay? Because I need to send the Spirit. What you need to do, folks, is when you get some time, read the book of Acts. Read the book of Acts. Because after Jesus left, he came back. The Spirit came. And the disciples could do everything he did. Peter raised a woman from the dead. You know, he said, you will do wonders. Oh. Gene, did I miss a uh, slide? I did. Back it up. Sorry. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. I was reading too fast. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you can't tell where it comes from or you can't tell where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The Spirit comes from God, friends. You don't know where God is, but he's here. He's always with you. Whatever you're doing, he's with you. Whatever you're saying, he's with you. Whatever you're thinking, the Lord is with you. So, was there another one after that? I think so. Shirley sent me this this week. Shirley, I had to break it down a little bit, but I appreciate that. 1 Corinthians 12. So that there should be no division in the body. Folks, we're the body. We are the body of this church. We are Christ's body in this church. Okay? There should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers. If one part is honored, every part is honored. So says the Apostle Paul. If you're, you have to be in unison Listen, nobody's going to agree on everything. That's impossible. Impossible. But you have to pray, and you have to help, and you have to discern. Because it's not our will, folks. It's God's will. This church is God's will, and it will be God's will. He created it, and it's here, and it's, it's going to be okay. Okay? Amen? Amen. All right. Pray with me for a second. Heavenly Father, we thank you 
We thank you for the opportunity to be here, to worship you in your house, in your beautiful house, to be a part of the body of Jesus Christ. Go with us and bless us through prayer and through the word. May we know your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we all said, Amen.